Good morning, boys and girls. It's Mrs. Paddock. Um, I have a story about bees. The story is called Follow That Bee, and it is a first book of bees in the city. It's by Scott Ritchie. Hope you enjoy it. Meet the bees. The five friends are buzzing with excitement today. They're visiting Martin's neighbor, Mr. Cardinal. He keeps beehives in this backyard and has invited everyone to see how honeybees live. So that's Mr. Cardinal. To bring more bees to urban spaces, many cities encourage people to build hives in their backyards. Be a friend. Bees need flowers for food, and just like we need variety in our food, bees need to eat from a variety of flowers too. Mr. Cardinal gives his bees a helping hand by keeping a big garden with lots of different wildflowers. The five friends give Mr. Cardinal a helping hand by working in his garden. Bees are suffering because they can't find the range of wildflowers they need. Pesticides and fungicides can also hurt bees, and when bees aren't strong and healthy, well, they may die from parasites and infections that normally wouldn't cause them harm. Bees eat food from all kinds of flowers so they can stay healthy. And I eat food from all five food groups so that I can stay healthy. Grow a garden. Mr. Cardinal and, his, and the friends are heading to the garden center to look for more bee-friendly flowers to plant. Everyone wants to make sure that Mr. Cardinal's bees are well fed. Bees will travel many miles to find flowers, but they prefer to forage close to their hives. A bee might visit over a thousand flowers in one day. Honeybees love nectar from dandelions. I let mine grow. So right now we got lots of dandelions outside, don't we, right? So guess what? The honeybees love that. Your parents might not like them, but the honeybees sure do. Bees knees, needs. <laughs> At the garden center, everyone chooses native species. That means it's plants that are natural to the area. Bees like these best. The kids load up the wagon with as many different bee-friendly plants that they can find. Honeybees eat two things, and both are found in flowers. Nectar, which the bees turn into honey, is loaded with sugar and gives them energy. Pollen, provides them with protein and fat. So those are the two things that honeybees need, honey bees need, nectar and pollen. Bees like purple, blue, and yellow flowers. They can't see the color red. So here there's a, a list of plants that bees like. So plant these and help the bees. So asters, cilantro, crocus, fennel, lavender, poppy, sage, snowdrop, sunflowers, thyme. Those are all great plants to plant if you want bees to survive. Friends in nature. Next, Mr. Cardinal takes the kids to a local pollinator garden. The flowers here are planted to attract pollinators like butterflies, bees, and wasps, says Mr. Cardinal. What does a pollinator do? asks Sally. Well, a pollinator moves pollen from one flower or plant to another, says Mr. Cardinal. One out of every three bites of food that we eat comes from plants pollinated by bees. Without bees, there would be a lot fewer, fewer fruits, vegetables, and nuts. Flowers need bees, and bees need flowers. They're friends in nature. And we're gonna start from here. When a bee collects food from a flower, pollen sticks to the hair on its body. When the bee goes to the next flower, that pollen it brings with it helps that flower to produce seeds. The seeds then grow into new plants. Honeycomb home. Look, shouts Martin, a beehive. Bees build their hives with wax that comes from their bellies. A female bee chews the wax, mixing it with her saliva or spit. When she's done, it's just the right texture for building a wax cell. Rows of these cells make up a honeycomb. Many honeycombs make up a hive. This six-sided shape is called a hexagon. Remember, six means, hex means six, right? 
It is the best shape for a honeycomb cell because it wastes no space and it's super strong. Here's what it looks like inside the hive. So here you go. Let it be. Pedro notices a construction site next door. Huh, that used to be an empty lot. As cities grow, many places that bees once called home are disappearing, but more and more cities are finding ways to get back to nature. People are turning their gardens and rooftops into homes for bees. If an empty lot is left to nature, it will soon be full of bee-friendly flowers and plants. Better together. Back in Mr. Cardinal's yard, the friends watch the bees at work. In a hive, every bee has a job and they work together. No one bee could survive on its own. They have chores to do around the house, just like we do, says Pedro. There is only one queen and she's the biggest female in the colony. There are a few hundred drones in each hive, but there can be up to 80,000 worker bees. So you're gonna have a female, one, you're gonna have a few hundred drones, and you're gonna have about 80,000 worker bees. A drone is a male bee. His job is to mate with the queen. So here's the queen, or the queen is here, she's huge, right? Um, so that she can lay eggs. The queen has only one thing to do, one job. Her job is to lay eggs. She can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day. That's a lot of work, isn't it? Worker bees are females and they work in the hardest. They collect pollen and nectar, make wax, clean the hive, feed the queen, and care for the young and produce honey. They got a lot of jobs to do, don't they? Be or not be. Uh, Yuli notices that it isn't always easy to identify honeybees because other bugs, such as hornets, beetles, and moths, they can look similar. Mr. Cardinal teaches the five friends how to spot a honeybee. So here's a worker bee. Let me get closer here. There's a worker bee, there's the queen, and there's the drone. Okay. A bee flaps its wings over 200 times a second. That's how a bee gets its buzz. Here's uh, what a bee looks like. So they have antenna, they have a head, a thorax, and they have the abdomen. They have wings, a forewing and a hind wing. They have a stinger, some of them have a stinger. Pollen basket, so on their legs, they have a special thing that collects the pollen. A proboscis, so that's what drinks the, um, the nectar, right? Oops, sorry, that's what drinks the nectar. So it's kind of like a big straw. And there's the eye, and of course those are the legs, okay? Wiggle waggle. Bees get excited just like us, and sometimes, well, they dance. When a bee comes back from foraging, she dances to tell the other bees where to find food. The round dance says there are flowers close by. The waggle dance says the flowers are far away and shows them which way to fly. So. This is how they look when they do their little dance. Waggle, 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 wiggle, 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 right? And it tells the other bees how to find their food. The more flowers, right? The direction and length of each waggle tells each bees exactly where they can find pollen and nectar. The more a bee waggles, well, the more food is available. Hey, I can do a waggle dance too. That's pretty funny. Hey, that stings. Ouch! shouts Nick. Bees sting to scare enemies away. A sting, well, it can be very painful for us, causing swelling, redness, and itchiness, but it's much worse for the bee. After a bee stings you, its barbed stinger is torn away from its belly, and guess what? Well, the bee dies. So, you know, that's actually a bad thing, right? Luckily, Mr. Cardinal knows what to do to help Nick. He pulls out the stinger as quickly as possible. He washes the sting with soap and water and he applies ice. He explains that everyone should be extra careful around bees. Some people might actually be allergic to bee stings and they might not even know it. So you gotta be really careful around bees, okay? It's honey time. Once a bee colony produces more honey than the bees need, 
the beekeeper can remove some. Beekeepers wear protective suits in case the bees sting them. Mr. Cardinal has another trick to protect himself. Smoke calms the bees, he says as he takes the top off the hives. Mr. Cardinal scrapes honey from the frame and puts it through a filter to remove the wax. Then the kids help him pour it into jars. It's ready for the market. So that's how you smoke the beehive. It kind of makes them a little bit drowsy uh, so that they don't fly and try and sting you. A buzzy day at the market. Supporting local beekeepers, farmers, and gardeners is one of the best ways you can help bees. Is there a local market where you live? So some people like to go buy their honey, for example, at St. Norbert uh, Farmer's Market, uh, St. Leon's, like those different places, they sell uh, farmer's uh, honey uh, from, from around here, so local honey. My dad gets our honey here. I'm going to tell everyone about Mr. Cardinal's honey. Be a good neighbor. Do you want to help the bees? Well, make a bee bath in your garden. You'll need a shallow glass or ceramic dish, some rocks, pebbles or marbles, and some fresh water. Put the pebbles or small rocks inside the shallow dish. This gives the bees a place to stand when they drink the water. Place the dish in a shady area of your garden. Add water, but just enough so that the rocks are not covered. Now your bees can drink and take water home to the larva and cool their hives. Don't forget to refill the water. A hive of bees can use a quarter of water a day. Does your school have a pollinator uh, garden? Maybe you can start one. Be ready to spend time caring for the garden. Plants need watering and pruning. And remember, bees love dandelions. Let nature take over. Plants will soon grow and the bees will be grateful. So there you go. So a little bit of information about bees. Uh, and so again, because the city, we see lots of dandelions right now, it's not actually a bad thing. They look pretty, all those yellow flowers, uh, and the bees do love them. So if you have some dandelions growing, just tell your parents, say, relax, the bees love it. So uh, don't worry, don't go weeding and picking them because bees love them, right? There you go. Hope you have a wonderful day, my friends. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.